Asnorka, Her to the Mouse Empire, is the latest Star Wars parody show airing on a streaming service you canceled a year ago. Written by ChatGPT, Asnorka is the story of a plank of wood dressed as a fish person that's traveling through the galaxy in search of a different facial expression. The first three episodes are now available, and all together are as exciting as filing your taxes. It's the perfect show for people who love watching emotionless characters stare at things for long periods of time without saying anything or even scrunching their forehead. All together, the first three episodes equal out to just about two hours, but you could trim it all down to about 15 minutes and lose literally nothing. I'm going to do it for you right now. The first episode starts with a New Republic prison transport ship getting a transmission from a small transport shuttle claiming to be Jedi who want to see one of their prisoners. Naturally, the captain is suspicious given the fact that Jedi are supposed to be long gone at this point, and he's sure it's someone disguised as Jedi for nefarious means. I'm calling their bluff. Have security meet in the hangar. The captain, being really smart, decides that the best way to handle this highly suspicious ship is to let it aboard with no further questions, walk directly up to the not Jedi with six scrawny extras who are currently striking outside of Netflix, and call the very intimidating man in the dark robe a bitch. You're no Jedi. Just some overconfident Imperial trash who just pushed their luck too far. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. The not Jedi, recognizing that words are violence, are forced to defend themselves against highly trained security guards. After the not Jedi defend themselves from the microaggressions of the extras, Ray Stevenson wanders down a hallway where some security guards are taking naps on the floor, and opens a cell door to reveal a character who appeared in one episode of a different show two years ago that no one remembers. They leave the prison ship together while she tells the audience that this will be yet another Disney Star Wars story where the characters have to find a secret map that leads to a secret place. After that, we meet our main character, a plank of wood, who sneaks into the line for the Indiana Jones ride at Disney. Land. She spends a long time silently looking at things in really long, drawn-out shots until she's ambushed by the most accommodating assassin droids in the galaxy, who all loudly announce their presence and instead of shooting her, slowly walk toward her at the same time and leave obvious openings for her to attack them. The group all have a little play fight with some incredibly lethargic choreography until the droids decide to self-destruct, but not before loudly announcing it so A-Plank has time to escape. Initiate self-destruct protocol. Why didn't they just not even announce they were there in the first place and just self-destruct while she was in there? But thankfully that didn't happen and A-Plank manages to escape. After this we get a series of really boring scenes of flat characters telling the audience in monotone voices what this show is even about. When A-Plank was in line for the Indiana Jones ride earlier, she found a map she believes leads to the location of Grand Admiral Thrawn and possibly Ezra Bridger. This leads her to teaming back up with Sabine Wren. And if you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, don't worry, you'll just have to go back and watch seven seasons of a kid's show, and then four seasons of another kid's show, plus an episode of The Mandalorian, and possibly even two episodes of Book of Boba Fett. Don't worry, I'll wait for you. They didn't even do a recap of any of the events leading up to this show. You're basically just dropped into season 5 of a show that started in 2015. Shit, the only reason I have even kind of a grasp of what's going on is from watching recap videos on YouTube. Anyway, A Plank and Sabine have an impromptu staring contest for a few minutes before going into A Plank's ship to stare at more things and speak very flatly. This isn't just about finding Ezra. It's about preventing another war. You think I don't know that? According to Lady Wren. See? There you go. Everything's gonna be fine. I don't understand why things have to be so difficult. This goes on for about 10 fucking minutes until Sabine finally unlocks the map by turning it. At this point, an accommodation droid decides it would like a hug and grabs Sabine while another droid breaks her stuff. She's then challenged to a lightsaber fight with Cockeye Jedi, where they swing at each other's lightsabers and never at the openings they both leave for each other. Cockeye Jedi forgets their play fighting and accidentally stabs Sabine straight through the chest with a lightsaber. This only momentarily knocks the wind out of Sabine, who by the next day has just brushed it off like nothing happened. Because as we all know, being impaled through your torso with a laser that can melt reinforced steel is as dangerous as being bonked on the head with a toy nerf sword and can only kill someone if they're a little bitch. <laughs> no! 
This one was from the exact same episode. While Sabine takes her power nap, a plank goes to her place to look for any clues, and lucky for her, a droid happened to still be there waiting for her, even though the attack happened seemingly hours ago, and the cockeyed Jedi already escaped with what she came for. A plank then borrows the droid's head and has Sabine, who's all recovered from her ouchie, search the droid's memory and finds the location of where it was created. Not who sent it, or what its mission was, but where it was manufactured, and they decide to go investigate. Which is kind of like if you found an iPhone on the street and to find its owner, you went to the Chinese slave labor camp where it was built. But A Plank and Tentacle Head decide to go because even though the factory was controlled by the Empire, after the war, the Republic just apparently forgot this planet was there and never bothered to go check it out. Damn, no wonder they stayed loyal to the Empire if the Republic couldn't even be bothered to send a droid in to check on them. There they meet Tony Shalhoub, who runs the place and are immediately suspicious of him because he's a white man and they know better. While checking out the place, Tentacle Head notices they're building something far bigger than anything the Republic have any use for. While Tony Shalhoub stumbles around to try to find an excuse for this, one of the extras loudly announces to the entire room that he's gonna attack them. Imagine if he wasn't a complete moron and had just sat there quietly aiming his gun at the back of a plank's head. Thankfully for our heroes, however, Disney requires characters to loudly announce when they're sneaking up on someone. After this, A Plank murders all of these overworked and underpaid employees with families who were just doing their jobs and dives out the window to chase after a ship when she runs into an Inquisitor. She pulls out her lightsabers, never once holding them the way she did every single time we've seen her in the last decade, utilizing the fighting style she became known for, and the two of them have a really lazy nerf sword fight. The Inquisitor gets so bored from the play fighting that they have their ship come pick them up so they can take a nap. A Plank stands there and just watches them escape even though their ship isn't that far away from her and she could easily pull them or the entire ship down with the force. But unfortunately the writers didn't watch the animated series either and they didn't know she could do that. We discover that the ship she was after is part of a massive hyperdrive Ray Stevenson and what's her name are going to use to bring Grand Admiral Thrawn back from his exile. Knowing there's a threat coming, Sabine decides to be trained in the ways of the Jedi by A Plank, even though she's never shown any hint of Force sensitivity, and that's kind of a requirement to be a Jedi. It's like the rule. Despite knowing exactly how the Force works and that only certain people can wield it, A Plank gaslights her into believing she can anyway, leading to a fascinating scene of Sabine staring at a cup. Tentacle Head holds a Zoom call with the Republic Council to tell them about Thrawn. The computers think the possibility of a Grand Admiral of the Empire reappearing after mysterious vanishing only a couple of years ago is completely ridiculous and absurd. I guess they forgot that the Empire completely blindsided them and took control overnight. This guy is so high he doesn't even know where he is. The computers ask the actual people in the room to leave so they can discuss what to do. A Plank and Sabine discover the big secret thing the Empire is building when they're attacked by ships whose only weapons are laser pointers that cats play with, as they directly hit our character's ship multiple times with zero effect whatsoever. The lasers are so ineffective that A Plank and Sabine barely even raise their voices or act like they're in any danger whatsoever. I know these ships have protective shields, but these lasers are just disappearing into nothing. A Plank's droid, who is actually a pretty good character, says in order for his scan on the structure to complete, A Plank has to get closer to it while holding the ship perfectly still, which I don't remember ever being a thing in Star Wars before and seems really stupid. The Imperials start firing lasers at them, and A Plank decides the best course of action is to continue flying in a straight line directly in their line of fire. Even if they had to get closer to complete their scan, why not just list a little bit to the side to at least try to not take all of their fire head on? Unfortunately, one of the Imperials accidentally loaded a lot round in with all the toy lasers they've been shooting this whole time and actually destroys a plank ship. Luckily the scan completed one second before they were hit and they already got what they needed. Cockeyed Jedi goes to finish them off with her ship when a plank decides to walk out into space and fight three spaceships with her nerf swords. <laughs> Planks in space. The spaceships, which could easily just stay away enough to shoot the shit out of her until she was dead, decide that a better strategy would be to kamikaze directly into her, which doesn't work. You're in all the vastness of space where you could just hover 60 feet away from them and unload everything you've got, or you could do that, I guess. The characters then continue their play fight in the middle of a Gojira song while Cockeye Jedi stares into the camera a lot. The girl bosses escape and check out the scan, where they discover that the ship they were after is part of a massive
massive hyperdrive Ray Stevenson and what's her name are going to use to bring Grand Admiral Thrawn back from his exile, something the audience knew in the last episode. Cut to Ray Stevenson standing still for a few seconds, just staring off in the distance. And that's where the show is right now. That was three episodes, totaling two hours and 24 minutes. This show has a total of eight episodes, meaning next week it will be halfway over already. And while it's not the worst of the Disney Star Wars trash, it still just feels like a waste of time, padding out its runtime with extremely drawn out scenes when the series is already short as fuck anyway. I mean, if you have eight episodes and just under eight hours to tell your story, why would you waste so much time just quietly staring at things. I'm a big defender of Andor against people who said that was too boring. And while I think that show could have tightened it up a bit, I didn't think it was boring at all. Mainly because when the characters were talking, they talked like real living people who had stakes and things on the line and knew the gravity of their situations. They conveyed the intensity of what was happening in their performances. Here we just get... And the weird thing is Disney could have really pulled off exactly what they've been saying they've been wanting with this show. Ahsoka is a popular character that happens to be a strong woman. Many fans already have an attachment to her. Zario Dawson is a great actress and is generally well liked. And fans have been dying to see Thrawn in live action. Yet somehow with all of these lined up for them, Disney produces a bland, boring, drawn out, but somehow short at the same time, series that only the key danglers will enjoy. <laughs> And I have to assume the characters being so flat is a deliberate choice. Ahsoka was always a very expressive character, and I know she's much older, more mature, and has been through some shit here, but there's a difference between being aged and stoic and being bored. Oh well, I never had high hopes for this one. While I hoped I'd be wrong, the red flags were there from the very beginning, and if anything, I'm just surprised it's not the worst fake Star Wars product Disney has queefed out so far. But is it worth watching? No. But is it worth putting on as background noise? Also no. Anyway, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.